How's it? This is Mundo. Happy 2021, Nam. It's virtual, but we're still doing it. Show must go on, right? I'm going to talk to you about Anatomy of Sound guitar picks. It's what I use, and I know picks are subjective. It's a little hard to be objective because we each like what we like. But I'm going to tell you why I like this and why I use it and how I use them. Uh, specifically, I use these Black Heartbeats. Okay, and if you notice, they are 3D. The uh, tip of the pick is thinner than where you actually hold it. But we'll get into that. So I've been playing these picks for about three years now, and I was playing a few different booths and shows at NAMM, so I literally was walking out of Hall E, the dungeon, and um, I found Larry and this company, Anatomy of Sound, Larry's the owner. And within trying it for a few minutes, I was late. I said, I got to go. They gave me some picks. I literally went upstairs to the booth, uh, Washburn booth where I was playing. And this is what happened. That was minutes after finding this pick, and um, I had to play, I think, four or five more different shows, different booths, and I used the pick for everything after that. I used it for the gypsy jazz stuff, the acoustic stuff, and the electric stuff, and uh, that's one of the greatest things about this pick. I've, I've been able to kind of be, be able to use one pick for all gigs. I do change in the studio, and um, if I'm doing a big show and there's a bunch of picks in front of me, I can do that. Um, but that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Now, let's go back to the dungeon, Hall E. Years ago, when I first started working at NAMM, I think the first time... Oh, I can't remember. It was a long time ago. 2002, 2003. Rick Julian, the head of Sound Tech, part of a Washburn company, uh, would have me go with him to Hall E. He thought... That was where the trends, you could probably see the trends for the upcoming years would be in that room and that all the the big minds, the uh, uh, innovation was, was happening there. And as things would be successful in the dungeon, you would see these companies pop up on the main floor. So we would go down there and study these new companies. And um, even if I didn't wasn't interested or didn't get the concept. I would really work hard on it so I could kind of see future trends. Anyway, that's why I stopped at Anatomy of Sound and it was great meeting Larry. I don't know if he plays guitar, but he's definitely an engineer and he was all about engineering a pick and new designs as well as tone. He was talking about tone and uh, like I first tried on an acoustic guitar and the Gypsy Jazz picks we use for that, they're thick. Uh, one millimeter to two millimeter thick and they make a clicky sound. I hated that. I instantly lost that with this pick um, And it was really comfortable leading up to that NAMM show I practiced so much and I was using the Jazz 3 shredder picks all the time and the, the raised writing was eating up on my um, On the side of my index finger where I held the pick. It was just getting chewed up. So all of a sudden I tried this pick and uh no pain. There is an indentation on the inside, and like I said, it's a 3D piece of material, and you you just hold the pick the normal your normal way, and there's an indentation in there. It just feels comfortable, gives you more grip, and I don't have to hold so hard. I'll talk about that in a second. And what I what I also like is the edges are rounded. So as I I do a pick slant where I lean forward, and when leaning my pick forward, if you can see. <laughs> just goes right over the string and just slides through it. It's really nice. It's like butter, but it's really nice for... It's got a great tone. So uh, I love that about these picks. Now the pick, the tip of the pick is really what we only touch the strings with. So the rest of the pick is actually giving me information. Let me show you a few of the different picks they have. So the black is their hardest material, so it would be considered they're heavy. The bronze, now they're all the same thicknesses, but it's a softer material and it, there's more flex in the tip, so it's considered the medium. And 
Let me see. Here's a white. The white is the softest and it has a lot more flex. So got three picks, but what's fun is if I'm going for a tone or if I'm trying to to capture a genre or a sound, I'm just basically using one pick. So let me demonstrate. Last year leading up to NAM, I um, once again was over practicing. I had given myself tendonitis years ago from playing flamenco stuff and over practicing. I kind of felt like that was going to happen again. I was just on the verge of going into the uh, tendonitis land. And Larry said, check out our new pick. And I forgot what they call them, but they're the heart heartbeat. I call them the jumbos, the jumbo heartbeats. Anyway, they're cool. They're thick like a gypsy jazz pick, so it's kind of nice. <laughs> But it's kind of like they took the onus out, out of my arm, especially for this kind of picking. So I was just letting gravity do its, uh, I was just letting gravity do its job. And what's really neat about that is if I if I'm tapped out on my tendonitis arms and talk to your doctors about this, this is a great way to keep practicing and not stopping, and uh, I'd be fine. So I use these big jumbos for practicing a lot. So I worked in a big show called La Rev. Steve McCulley was our famous, by the way, uh, physical trainer, because there was athletes in this show. I brought this pick to him once, and he freaked out. And he's not a guitar player. I didn't know why he freaked out. He said, the reason why, the, with this being so thick, if you can see the contour, with this being so thick, and I've got a white one right here too, it gives your, it gives your brain more tactile information. You're holding something thicker, gives your brain more tactile information. And, uh, and there's more connecting neuron-wise and all that stuff. He could speak to it more than I, but I can say that it is a great, for me, practicing. I have taken on, on Gypsy Jazz gigs, but here's the white one, the softest material. Check out the difference in tone. Okay. That's a softer material. There is a bronze. I don't have it in front of me. I tend to use the black harder. Pretty, pretty cool. All right. So once again, it's so cool to work with Larry and part of the R&D is pretty cool. He's an engineer. He would start with all these picks as 3D molds. Then he'd send them out to guitar players and he would ask for our honest opinion. And then he would take all that information, come out with another mold. And once again, that would just keep compounding until he got the perfect pick for him. And uh, tone, feel, all of us chimed in. And I call it the flying Hawaiian pick, but it is the black heartbeat. Check this out. With this black heartbeat, I can play all styles and I'm using the same pick. Okay. Uh, and by the way, I can take it to any gig. And did I show you this? So you're not going to lose your picks because it comes in this small jewel, jewel case. And it's got some sticky tape right there. And there's your picks. I would play at the LaRev show and I would use a few different anatomy of sound picks. But for our, my main stuff, I would use this. And here's me playing a rock solo. this black heartbeat that I use. All right, so I have a gypsy jazz group called the Hot Club of Las Vegas. We have three CDs out and um, I'm using the same pick on a traditional gypsy jazz guitar.
That's Johnny Miles and Chris Davis from my group as well, using the black heartbeat. I even use it for funk. <laughs> So there's funk and so it's kind of cool I could take one pick one shape and play a gig with all styles because that's that's kind of what I do I play all styles all genres and I have in the past taken a bunch of picks and changed them so if anything I will take these three guys and uh, just just go for feel by the way they have other tips if you notice it's a traditional kind of uh, teardrop teardrop shape. I use this because of the it's the soft white uh, material and the flexier tip. I use this for strumming acoustics and it's great in the studio. You don't hear the pick on the strings. These are great for acoustic uh, guitars and I forgot one thing. Check this out. Sometimes when you're playing a specific kind of style but it's not um, might not be too hard. Let's just say I was doing this. So I'm using my thumb, kind of flamenco style with rest strokes, and I'm using the side of my nail. If I need it louder, or if I was playing the rest of the song with a pick, I could use the pick on something simple as well, and get that really authoritative, uh, authoritative sound that you would get with your thumb. And then if I wanted to use the white. I really appreciate that. I had this idea of this pro crazy progressive rock tune in my head, but I was working on some gypsy jazz stuff and some other non-metal stuff, and I just had to get this out of my head. So I went in my studio and laid this down, and what you're gonna see is literally a few minutes after me making up this idea and kind of realizing it. These picks make everything easier. <laughs> <laughs> Look at me going up and down the strings. I would have had to practice with another pick more and I was able just to capture my my thoughts with this idea. They make you play faster. They do make they make you play faster, don't? They make you play faster. Don't just uh, trust me. You got to try these picks out. But let me let me show you what I mean. So I really appreciate the, the picks helping me cheat and get it real quick. Um, I will say, if you're used to your conventional picks like I came from, you got to give these picks a good week, couple days, maybe two weeks. Just, just kind of give them a chance. And then once you're in, you'll know what I mean. They are fantastic picks. They're the best picks on the market, in my opinion. And you got to try them out. Anatomy of Sound Guitar Picks. Great people. Give them a holler, ask them questions, tell them what you're looking for. And uh, they've got some really cool things on the horizon. I'm excited for them for 2021. Until next time, this is Mundo. Aloha. So until next time, this is Mundo. Aloha.